Okay. So we're we are progressing. <laughs> Yay. All right. Here we go. Let's pray first. Father God, I thank you for what you're doing in our lives, or you are doing such a, an amazing thing. And Lord, I just thank you that we are, are able to have the freedom to <laughs> your word. We have the freedom, Lord, to meet with one another. And Lord, you have seen fit to bring us greater understanding of things and to bring us into a way of studying. Lord, I just thank you for all of this. It is such a huge privilege to be able to have the word of God handed to you. Lord, it's just amazing. And we thank you, Lord, for all of this. And Lord, I pray that you would today help us with our, our revelation knowledge that we can receive from you what we have what we need and what you want us to know or may we grow in this in a beautiful way in jesus precious name amen 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 all righty okay we are still doing the uh, resurrection series this is number 11 um I delineated to Roxanne that there are at least five more. I didn't expect this to be this long. I really didn't. I'm sorry. And everybody knows that I delude myself on a regular basis, lie to myself often. It's just the thing I do. It's just like, it's just okay. I just keep thinking. It's like, I didn't know how long this was going to be, but I know that there's got to be certain things that I still have to cover. So we're getting there. Okay. So let's uh, let's uh, move it on here. A little review from last week, which is kind of a big review because it was a big topic. I don't know how to cut it down because it's all one story. So I'm gonna you're gonna have to just side with me here and be cool. Here we go. The focal point of everything is Jesus. Okay, let me just I'll come to that. <laughs> that's it. We can just pray and go home. Okay, that's about everything. Everything is Jesus. He brought it, he bought it all and he brought it to us. The entire universe was focused. They didn't know it. Not all of it knew it, but everything was focused on his death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. Everything is looking forward to it. All the Old Testament looking forward to it. Everything is looking back toward it now. All it changed everything. Absolutely everything. Because on that day, Jesus bought eternal salvation for us. Okay. Changed everything. Okay. Everything changed. He knew it was coming, but he also, he wanted to show us how to live, knowing what he had available, what he was doing. He walked in it daily. So he's our example. Um, so there's a couple of questions that has come to my mind. I went, well, wait, so I've got a couple of things that I'm going to explore that are new questions for me. So I'll let you know that. Uh, this is just all ongoing, pretty cool, okay? But he is still present with us to walk us through everything right now, okay? This isn't about he did everything back then. No, 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 he's still here, okay? He's still alive. That's the whole idea behind the resurrection is that now he can't die, okay? Um, and the only reason he died back then was because he let himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is so good, huh? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. So, so anyway we started last week we did a whole story and we're going to do that story again john chapter 11 1 through 4 and there was a certain sick one what a nice identity issue okay <laughs> lazarus from bethany of the village of mary and her sister martha and it was mary who anointed the lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother lazarus was sick then the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, the one whom you love is sick. And hearing Jesus said, this is not sickness to death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God be glorified by it. And again, a little bit interesting is that this is one of the only times that Jesus referred to himself as the Son of God. Mm, really? Everywhere else is Son of Man, Son of Man, Son of Man, Son of Man, Son of Man. This time, he says, I'm going to show you what being related to God is all about. Okay, so this is a big deal. And then it's the glory. And we're not going to get into the glory now because we're going to do that some time further down the road. 
verses five through eight. Then Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Therefore, when he heard that he is sick, indeed, he remained in the place where he was for two days, which I think is still one of the funniest statements ever. We love these people, so I'm not going to go healing. I know. Huh? <laughs> you know, I just think that's just perfect. Okay. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, just now the Jews were seeking to stone you. Do you want to go there again? Okay. One thing you need to know about all this, and Jesus loved Martha and her sister. It always starts with love. The I disciples like did not get this. Right. Oh, Lord, they kill you. Want to go over there? Okay. So what was their motivation? Fear. Fear. Yes. Right on the money. Verses 9 through 13. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of the world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. We will hit that at another point. In, okay, There's, that's coming. Um, uh, but then after this, he said to them, our friend Lazarus was falling asleep. Now, you got to understand, he just said this big thing. And you can tell, if you've ever taught the Bible, you can say some stuff and everybody just sits there and looks at you. You can tell that there's, there's okay, okay. Jesus did this. If anyone walks in the day, doesn't stumble because the night is all this, and you can see the steps of it. Yeah. And they're just looking at it. So then he says, the Yeah, really. <laughs> then he says, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going that I may awaken him. Then his disciples said, Oh, okay. Now it's in the <laughs> natural. We're here. Okay. Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. But Jesus has spoken about his death, and they thought he was spoken of the sleep of slumber. So it's huh. he's, he's reiterating here. Yeah, they're not catching what he is throwing at them. Okay, they're not picking up what he is laying down. I don't know whatever expression you want to use, they ain't doing it. Okay, so it goes on. It says, therefore, Jesus said to them plainly, <laughs> "No more dinking around and being at this. Lazarus has died, guys. Okay." And I rejoice because of you in order that you may believe that I was not there. Let us go to him. Then Thomas, he having been called twin, surnamed Eeyore, said to the fellow disciples, let us go even way that we may die with him. Okay. You see, they, they are just completely unclear on the concept. Yeah. He says, I'm going there to wake him. He's dead. I'm going there to wake him. He's dead. I'm going there to wake him. And they're going, I don't know, let's go die with him. It's just all, you know, they're missing everything because they are so motivated by fear. Yeah. There, there's no going. faith in this yeah. crowd. All of a sudden. There yeah. is none here. Okay. So, and remember, they're not Christians. They're not going to be Christians until after the resurrection. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, wasn't raising some, someone from the dead um, sp a miracle specifically for the Messiah? I don't know that I could think of any one specific prophecy that says that Jesus is going to raise the dead and that's a Messiah point. I can't, I get it. I have not seen anything in my study for that. Okay. But I do know that, remember, Paul raises the dead, Peter raises the dead. Okay. They all do it later. And so is it part of the Messiah? It is part of the understanding of him bringing light and life. And so that's what we're going to be getting into. So I don't know that it's specifically. Messiah, but it can be on that. Okay. Well, I mean, Elijah's bones raised the dead. It wasn't even alive for it. Wasn't even alive for it. <laughs> <laughs> Making no bones about it. Oh. Okay. Just <laughs> let us go on. Okay. They were unclear on the concept. <laughs> they had fear, not faith. They missed the love part. Yeah. Okay. They missed the whole thing about the love part. So Jesus, I'm sure he's looking, he's giving all this good stuff, and they're just going, you know, not there. I know he just goes, Okay, guys, let's just, we'll go. Okay. <laughs> You'll get it. You'll get it eventually. Okay. Verse 17 on. Then coming, Jesus found him already being held in the tomb for four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about 15 stadia off. It's about three. And many of the Jews had come to those around Martha and Mary that they might console them concerning their brother. Then when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. And again, little hints here, they had money. Mm -hmm. They were not destitute people. They had, because for people to come to do all this sort of stuff for them, they had a 
tomb on their property. They have all this sort of stuff there. That, okay, these guys are not hurting. But she had the anointment, the oil too, of but, anointing. And yeah, and that was which 300 was, days right. wages worth. And so it was a lot, of, a lot of stuff. So anyway, then goes on. It says, then Martha said to Jesus, here we go. Lord, if you were here, my brother would not be dead. But even now, I know that whatever you may ask God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Mary said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection in the last day. Okay. She's saying theological things. Okay. Jesus was making practical statements and she's taking them as theological. Mm -hmm. He's going to raise again. Says, and she says, yeah, I know it's going to happen in the last day. You know. <laughs> And so, yeah, he, she, she missed the point. Why? Because emotions cloud the mind. Okay. And you, you just don't think straight. Then it goes on and it says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one believing into me, though he die, he shall live. And everyone living and believing into me shall not die to the age never. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of, Son of God, who comes into the world. Now, the resurrection, he says, I am the resurrection and the life, the one believing into me, which is what? Uniting with him in mm -hmm. his resurrection. Okay? This is the whole Romans 6 thing, which, if given permission, I will redo Romans 6 again. Okay? We'll see what happens on that. Okay. But then he did say this. He says, Believing into me, though he die, he shall live. And everyone living and believing into me shall not die to the age, never. Okay? Living in our spirit gives us his life. Believing into me shall not die. We're talking about the joining with Jesus, being in him and him in us. In him and him in us. Okay? When we are in him... His life comes into us. That's the salvation that we're going to, they don't have that yet here in this story, but it's coming, okay, on the day of, of resurrection. It's all going to be there. This in him, in us thing is huge because that is what he prayed before his, his crucifixion. He says, Father, I pray that they be one, mm -hmm. I and them, they and me, you and them, they and you, you and them, they and us, me and him and them, and it's all, it's just all together. Okay, and he prayed that very thing for them because they didn't have it yet. Mm -hmm. That was Gethsemane night. The next day, oh, wow. he's going to be crucified. Three days later, he's going to raise and bring them that salvation. So he's talking four days. Here. Mm -hmm. Okay, just like, wow. Okay, but then he, he said to Martha, he says, do you believe this? And she just said, and this is, yes, Lord. <laughs> you know, yes, Lord, I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God who comes into the world. That's not what he said. Right. Okay. I believe you're the Messiah. Uh huh. And he says, so, yeah. Okay. So he has shown the depth of power available. He showed her, but she didn't catch it. And I, I understand she's okay. She doesn't have the Holy Spirit in her to explain these things, but he has shown the depth of power available. He is the only source of full resurrection. Oh, there's somebody. No, there I am. <laughs> well, that's one of you. Okay. He's the only source of full resurrection. You got to know that. That's all there is to it. He is the life itself. That's where we're going to be hidden a little bit later. Okay. We're going to get also stuff. He spoke life into existence out of himself. How did he do that? He was the one at the beginning that said, let there be light. He created life out of who he is. His life created life, made life. We are still part of this. And folks, I don't begin, even pretend to think I have full knowledge on that one. Okay, so how is that working? We're still playing with all that. What was it, a liquid? <laughs> Down. Death came from sin, though that we do kind of get. Mm -hmm. he, he is going to reapply the life, which is called resurrection, to reapply life. Okay? See, now we're saying this different. See, than we even said last week, but he is reapplying. Life had left Lazarus's body, and he's going to reapply the life to that body. 
what all is going to happen at that moment that Lazarus comes back into his body? For one, he's not sick anymore. Mm -hmm. For two, even though he has had no life flowing in his body and he was starting to decompose, mm -hmm. all that has been wiped out and he's back to actually mm -hmm. reconstituted back into a full blown, healthy man. Uh, the ideas behind all that is happening there in the tomb is just mind boggling. Lord, he stinketh. Okay, we'll get there. Okay. <laughs> it requires the faith, the spiritual force of causation. It requires the faith to be applied. Okay, I love it. Okay. Bleeding into him leaves no death left. To the believer, all life is available to use, and we don't understand what I just said. <laughs> Even though there is death all around us and in us, well, he's giving us huge information of life in its use. Okay. Yeah. Do you believe this? Yeah, we go. Hi. Uh, yeah. I mean, how many times has the Lord said, do you believe this? And we go, uh, uh, yes, sir. I, uh, I believe that. Yes, Lord. Amen. And then he applies and we go, it's unbelievable. <laughs> but only in him her belief is only in the initial theology of who he is but we got to give her credit because she won't be born again for a while okay so we give her a lot of credit that's all right <laughs> but then john 11 comes along verse 25 through 27 and jesus said to her i am the resurrection and the life i'm just reiterating he knew of his life force and the ability to apply it he knew the overwhelming focus of death that we have. So what did he say? I am the resurrection and the life. The one believing into me, though he is dead, he shall live. And everyone living and believing into me shall not die to the age. Never. Do you believe this? And I can ask the exact same question of every one of us here. Mm -hmm. Do we believe this? <laughs> well, we need to believe into him continuously using the spiritual forces of energy to apply that life. And again, I know more than I know I know. And I've applied a lot less than I know. I'm, I'm trying to reconcile what I know with what I apply. And I, I don't know about you guys, but this is like, there's a grand disparity between what I know and what I apply, okay? And I'm trying to bring those closer together. Huh. That's, that's what's happening in my life. It goes on, verses 28 through 31. And saying these things, she went away and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, the teacher's here and calls you. Now, I don't think she lied. I think the Lord asked. Okay, we don't have the entire script, but I'm sure he asked about where Mary, you know, can, can you go get Mary? Mm -hmm. Okay. And calling her sister Mary secretly saying the teacher's here and calls for you that one when she heard rose up quickly and came to, to him and Jesus had not yet come into the village was still in the place where Martha met him that's why I know that there's something he was he's waited because I'll stay here until you bring her mm. kind of a thing then the Jews who were with her in the house and consoling her seeing that Mary quickly rose up and went out they followed her saying she is going to the tomb so she may weep there and they all followed her out then Mary when she came to where Jesus was, seeing him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. Now, she said the same thing that Martha mm -hmm. said, but Martha and her sentences were different. Hmm. Not in the words, but in the attitude behind them. Hmm. And it shows that. The was different. Oh, certainly. Oh, there's everything about this is different, except the words are the same. But everything about it. She came just falling his feet. Then when he saw her weeping and the Jews who came down with her weeping, Jesus groaned in the spirit and troubled himself. Mm -hmm. Now, fear and sorrow instead of faith. Mm -hmm. Now she has fear. If you had been here, sorrow was messing with everything. That's all big deal. The unbelief in the atmosphere around there was palatable. You can just see it. Jesus is just having to deal with all this stuff. And he saw her weeping he saw all the jews coming with her weeping all the accusations if you had been here he would not have died i mean just, it's just the whole thing is this and he's he came to do something really beautiful and they're all tromping on his parade here so he's upset and it says that jesus groaned in the spirit and troubled himself and i'd just go ahead just dare you to 
Go pull out your old e-sword and look that phrase up. Hmm. Groaned in the spirit and troubled himself. It it actually says to snort like a horse. Huh. Okay. It's indignant at the unbelief. He just, oh, you know, just, yeah. Whenever you see Jesus in all these movies, you know, he's a lot more smooth than that. And he's so righteous. And he says, oh, oh, forsooth. Jesus wept. Oh, Lord. Yes, enough to just go, you people. Okay. Just drives me crazy because what happens very next, and he said, now he has no bones about this. No pun intended, but it was there anyway. But it's just like, it's just where have you laid him? See, there's no dinking around now. There's no talking about how you feel and what's going on. Just where have you laid him? Because he is upset at what he's having to deal with. Where have you put him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Mm. Why? He came to do something very beautiful. Mm. Okay. And instead, he encountered fear and unbelief in high high quantity. Mm. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them have said, was this one, the one causing the eyes of the blind, uh, opening the eyes of the blind, not able to have caused this one that he should not die? See, they limited him mm -hmm. to only those who were still alive. Okay. Oh, if he, yeah, now it's too late. Okay. Well, then something very interesting happens because it says, then groaning again within himself. Oh, Jesus. Oh, if he had only, if he had, I guess, and he's just, he's just upset. He's just really upset. This is groaning. He's just snorting again within himself. Jesus came to the tomb. It was a cave and the stone was lying on it. Jesus said, lift the stone. Martha, the sister of the one who had died, said, Lord, he already smells. For this is the fourth day. And he's stinking, Lord. Do you really want to do this? And he's looking at her and he says, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you'd see the glory of God? Mm. Says Martha, didn't I just tell you? Are you listening to what I'm saying? You know, apparently not, right. So, okay, so responding to what he is seeing in all those around him, he's he's groaning, okay? He's he's it. And this is the quote from Yoda that Yoda said to Oh, well, where'd it go? Yeah. Always is with you what cannot be done. Okay. Always is what? Always it is with you what cannot be done. Yoda yeah. does not speak normal language. Oh, gotcha. so, right? Yeah. I'm quoting here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Amen. Okay. Hope is with you. But it does say there, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? And we have not touched, touched much on the glory yet. We will. We will get there. Okay. But the glory of God. Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Okay. Somebody has something going on there that I can't, that is coming over the radio waves. Somebody has the news on? Somebody? Uh oh. Turn off your microphone or something. Thank you. But glory, as we have discovered, is the manifested light of the spirit realm. We've got so much to study about glory, okay? But it's not just the light of the spirit realm. Glory is also the love of the spirit realm. Glory is also the spirit of the spirit realm, okay? The glory is manifested power in every form. Now, what is Jesus saying? You're going to see the glory of God. You're going to see the manifestation of God on the planet. It's in the spirit realm is going to be manifested into the realm of the physical, and you're going to see it. It's right here. You're going to be able to witness it. Don't forget who you are, because you are the glory of the Lord mm -hmm. that you can see in the mirror. You are the manifested love, light, spirit, light, everything of the spirit changed in you to become who God has called you to be. You are the glory of the Lord. Okay. Who are we? We're beings changed into the light of God. Mm. Now, mm. that's it. That's all I'm going to talk about light today. Mm. We've got too much to cover. Okay. 
It goes on, verses 41 through 44. Then they lifted the stone where the dead one was laid, and Jesus lifted his eyes upward and said, Father, I thank you that you heard me, and I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd standing here, I said it, that they might believe that you sent me. Okay, so he is dealing with their unbelief mm -hmm. and this horrible atmosphere, and he's saying, okay, Lord, what I'm doing is I'm doing this for them, that they might catch what's going on here. Okay, I said, they might believe that you sent me, and... Saying these things, he cried out with a loud voice. And this is the best translation of this the, out of the Greek. Lazarus, end of sentence. Really? Here, end of sentence. Outside, end of sentence. Okay? Lazarus, here, outside, all commands. My authority. Oh, boy. Oh. And he's just, and, and it's so, such a change from the, the King James, which we always said, Lazarus, come home. <laughs> you say it with an English accent. Oh, you have to. <laughs> you know, that's right. Jesus used the English accent when he said that way, way back then. <laughs> Come full. He didn't say that. I like that. Oh, me too. And you can just tell the emotions that's here. Yeah. It makes Jesus more real to me. Is this just like makes that whole understanding. And the one who had died came out. Well, there's a there's a shocker, okay? Yeah. He came out. The hand, the feet, and the hands had been bound with sheets, and his face being bound with a cloth. Jesus said to them, "Loose him and let him go. Mm -hmm. Loose him, let him go." Now everybody's freaking about this. Time. He doesn't give the full narrative of what happens after this oh. when people go. No, they just stop. I can't even yeah. imagine commanding life to overcome death. What a beautiful thing! It was the Father's command. So it wasn't arbitrary. It wasn't just something he could walk by a, a cemetery and call everybody out. Yeah. Okay. No, it's all about what the father was doing. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't arbitrary. It was just something that was a specific command of the father. And he had been talking to the father. And he says, oh, Lazarus is sick. And can hear the father say, yeah, right. Here's a good plan. We're going to do this together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not arbitrary. Pretty cool. Jesus raised three people from the dead. Okay. Two of them immediately. There was a little girl who had died. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, she's dead. And so Jesus goes to her and raises her up. And that's pretty cool. And the second one is on the city of Nain, where you're coming out there. And he's seeing a burial procession. Oh, yeah. And she's widow. a widow. Yeah. And he knows he sees all this stuff that's happening. He just walks up and stops the beer and says, young man, arise. Just raises him right there. That kind of like. I love it. You're going to disrupt a funeral procession. That's good. That's really cool. But this one, four Did days. Get a refund? <laughs> <laughs> good question. Okay. Depending Our view of death use. is not usually correct. Okay. Our view of death isn't even correct, even though that's what our point of view is. Okay. But we do know this ultimate to statistic 10 out of 10 die. Okay. Yes. You're going to die. It just amazes me when people die and people go, oh, why did God take her? Dude. Okay. We're, everybody's dead. Yeah. For everybody. We're all going to die. Get used to the idea. Physical death, though, is the lowest form of death. Oh, uh, now we see this is going to be another subject matter coming up here not too long down the road. We got to discuss death. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. You can sneer now, but it's a good study. Actually, I'm I tried doing the word study on that, and it was the deadest word study I'd ever done. It <laughs> had nothing but death. It's all what? Okay. Soulish and spiritual deaths are much more complicated than physical death. Physical death. Hmm. When you start getting into other deaths, you're not really dead. What a concept. But you but can be. You're dead. But you're not. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, oh, we'll go into this later. Okay. Spiritual death. Conquered at salvation. Ooh, I like that part. Soulish death is by choice and deception. Mm. Okay. Much more on that later. That was called a teaser. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The life of God is way beyond our ability to understand this. Okay, way beyond. Our negative focus limits us. Just mm -hmm. limits us. So we need to start looking for life application. Life application. It's amazing how we believe stronger in the disease than we do in the healing. Okay. 
Why? Because we're coming from the death point, not yeah. from the life point. Yeah. We are resurrected, life-filled, glorified beings. And everybody said, yes, here we are. Amen. Yeah. Uh-huh. We are a resurrected, life-filled, glorified beings. We need to get our eyes together. Mm -hmm. So we need to see the glory of God. Yeah. Amen. Death is not our master. Also, amen. Life is how we exist. So, Lord, open our eyes and see the glory. May we see this. Okay, that was that's that's not bad for a little review wow. there, huh? And again, that's a fun, fun story. It's huge. Yeah. But Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Now, what has been fascinating to me about that is that he said it that way. Huh. That's two different subjects, the resurrection yeah. and life. But which is he? Yes. Both. Why the difference? Hmm. Good point. Yeah. See? Okay. We'll play with all this. We get to play. We get to play. Oh, yes, I get to play. Hmm. All right. Okay, I did this last week, and this is actually part of the review, but it's part of us heading on further down the road, and that is, first comes love. Everything started. He loves us. And, of course, we found out that because of his love, that's what gives us faith. And you can't add to your faith, virtue, knowledge, self-control, patience until you have the faith. Where'd the faith come from? Because it says you already have it. Hmm. Where'd the faith come from? Love, because he loved you, and because of that, because you believe in us. him, and yeah. your faith grew because of salvation. Mm -hmm. Boom, you had the faith. Now what? Well, once you have the faith, that's when you start being able to walk into power, okay? When you start using the power. And we have more power than we know what to do with, and God energizes it in certain ways. And so we've learned about the energy, the energase, how to energize the power, and how to bring it under dominion. See, these things just kind of grow, okay? Even though they're going downhill on the chart, they're still, yeah, be nice. I couldn't put love on the bottom. No. I can't. Yeah, it's just my That's the foundation. Yeah, I tell you. Amen. Okay, but then we started talking about the life force. It's, it's the it's dominating it's life force. To remember. Okay. Yeah. If nothing else, I know at the end of my life, there will be a few people who know a a few Greek words. That's right. all I know for sure. It just gives us an easy one to remember. Yeah. Okay. And after the life force, we know the life force is, is the life force of the resurrection. So re resurrection and application. Okay. Pretty cool. Now, this isn't just cold science. I know. Thank God. No, no, no. To understand the physics of the spirit realm, it requires a relationship with the God of the yeah. universe. That makes this not cold science, but very, very warm, hot science. Okay. This brings it all to life to me. Re requires a relationship with the God of the universe, which demands that we know his love first. Okay. We must know the redemption to know the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then from that, we get understanding our forgiveness, justification, sanctification, all those wonderful, long, big old Christian words that are all absolutely amazing, each one. Okay, so we're united with Jesus in all of it because he loves us. So what do we need to do? We need to understand our death in his death and then the life that comes from it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chocus, there it is. Okay, now we're going to go into new stuff that's not new, but it's new. We're going to play with this. This is going to be fun I'm, for me. We'll see if it's fun for anybody else. I can't guarantee that for anybody. And I had a lot of fun here. Okay, talk about Deuteronomy chapter 30, 14 through 20. We have touched this on so many lines, mm -hmm. okay? But it says, the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it, okay? We know that in this Old Testament, Hebrew, it's the bar, it means the total word. Mm. But in Deuteronomy, the total word 
was kind of limited. Right, because we didn't have Jesus. So. Yeah. So now, when Paul quotes this in Romans, he uses the word rhema. The mm. specific spoken word is near to you, very near to you. It's in your mouth and in your heart that you can do it. Because you can't do the entire logos. You just can't. We just don't have the capacity. We can't. Mm -hmm. But we can do everything he's taught, told us to do, which is the rhema, specific spoken word. And what he has specifically spoken to us, we can do. Okay, the word is very near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. Behold, I have set before you today life and good and death and evil, in that I am commanding you today to love Jehovah your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, and you shall live and multiply, and Jehovah your God shall bless you in the land where you are going in to possess it. Moses is doing this last soliloquy before he dies, and the children of Israel cross the Jordan to go into land. This is it. This is Deuteronomy, chapter 30, end of everything, and as soon as he gets done talking, God's going to kill him. Mm -hmm. You talk about a good reason to keep talking. <laughs> well, <this> <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for long preachers. Maybe that, that's, that's what it was. It all started really with funny. him. <laughs> Us born the Baptist. Yes. <laughs> but this is kind of a very, very fascinating thing because he has set before them a list life and good and death and evil. Now, this is extremely important. I'm playing with couplets. I've been playing with couplets for a while, and I'll be showing you this my playing with couplets here showing up here pretty soon but this is the first sets of couplets life good mm -hmm. death and evil mm -hmm. life and death is the first couplet they are opposites life right. and death and the second couplet is good and evil they're a couplet okay they're connected but there they are opposites okay Boom. opposites moses says i'm setting this before you today life and good and death and evil for you to love Jehovah your God. Then he goes on to say, but if you turn away your heart, that's the issue. Mm -hmm. Then you're not going to listen. You're going to be drawn on. Then you'll be bowed down to other gods and serve them, which is exactly what happened in Canaan. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have declared to you today that you shall certainly perish. And they did. You shall not prolong your days in the land in which you're crossing the Jordan to go in there to possess it. And that is true. Okay. This, oh, this is just prophetic as the day is long. I'm going to give life and good and death and evil in front of you. Now, now, if you do this wrong and your heart goes the wrong direction, it's going to fall apart. I have given you full warning. You will die. Mm -hmm. You will perish in the land. Okay? So then he says this. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today. Now, before we go any further, that expression is one of the greatest expressions here. This is amazing. Hmm. I call heaven and earth as a witness. Wow. Which means what? I'm calling both the heavenly realm, the spiritual realm, yeah. and the physical realm. Both are going to show. You can look at either one of them, see the evidence of what I'm going to tell you today. Okay? Even if you don't have spiritual eyes to see this in the spirit realm, you can see it in the physical. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's going to be simple. You guys are going to be able to see this. I call both heaven and earth as a witness today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Yes. He changed the list. First was life and good, and death and evil. This time is life, doesn't bring up good, and death, it doesn't bring up evil or good or nothing. He says life and death, just and then he adds to the list. The blessing and the curse. Now, the blessing and the curse, as we've taught this so many times before, mm -hmm. they're both spoken. So how do you speak life into existence? It comes with the blessing. Mm -hmm. How do you speak death into existence? It comes with the curse. Mm -hmm. Okay? Very simple. Not easy. To get our mouths straight is just tricky. Major chunk of the book of James is all about that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, oh no. Yes, and it is. It's not easy. Okay. But then he says this. This is the big part I wanted to get to. He says, therefore, choose life that you may live. Okay. Now, what he did not say here is as important as what he did say. What he did say is, therefore, choose life. What he did not say is choose between life and death. 
Mm -hmm. He did not say that. Why? Because death is default setting. It's what you already have. Mm -hmm. For you to choose life is to go against your natural grain. Your natural grain mm -hmm. is death. Therefore, if you look at these couplets, if you have life and good, okay, those are things that are not normal, but mm -hmm. death and evil are. Mm, and I think we all know that. Okay. Well, I think we're all, we should. Yeah. We should. You don't have any right. looking at anything, you should get that. But the whole idea here is now, I'm telling you, you can choose life and go against your natural way of doing things. Mm. Choose life. You got to choose life. You got to actually push for it because the default setting is death. You've got that already. Default mm -hmm. setting is evil. You got that already. The default setting is cursing. You do that already. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to choose life, choose good, and choose blessing. Boom. Mm -hmm. Why? That you may live. You and your seed, because you got to teach your kids that, to love Jehovah your God, to listen to his voice, to, so you can live in the land. This is what it's all about. Choose life. Choose life. It's a choice. Choosing life sounds easy. Well, well I don't think yeah, it is any deeper. Oh, yeah. Okay. What would you rather have? Yeah. A slice of this apple pie or this arm stick? Well. Choose. And you're going, well, I think it's rather, rather simple. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want this ice cream or you want this motor oil? <laughs> well, I know what I, well, I would choose. Yeah. Okay. So it's just like, it's, it's, you think it's just simple, mm -hmm. but we choose all day long, we choose the death. Mm. Sounds easy. Recognizing how much death is around us isn't easy. That's, yes. Okay. But it's all around us. It's everywhere you look. Now, uh, like I say, we went down Friday and went down rode the Santa train down through um, uh, the Royal Gorge, okay? It was really cool, just really, really neat. And, uh, wow, such beauty and such things. You see the bridge up there and it's all just, I mean, it's just really cool. It's just really cool. That was fun. But what was really interesting is watching the people. <laughs> That's... And so we had nine of us. And so there are two seats and two seats and two seats and two seats across the aisle. That's eight. Yeah. That meant one seat was set off by itself. Guess who got that seat? You did. Okay. <laughs> Why? Are they going to put Nana by herself? That no. ain't happening. You're going to split up families? That ain't happening. <laughs> so who's the... Default setting. Here we oh, go. Okay. Oh, oh Papa. It would have been oh, me too. It'd have been a so yeah. I thought over there. And so and then there's nobody in the other three seats. I thought, well, this might work out okay for me. And then <laughs> last second, these people showed up. Oh. Okay. Hi, folks. How's it going? <laughs> so but they're so they're sitting right there, knee to knee, okay, across from these people. And they're ordering liquor and stuff. And they have kids. They have all these kids with them and everything, and I guess they're getting wine and they're doing all this stuff. I'm just sitting there, just going, ah. yeah, and just watching death working in these families. Mm -hmm. And these were pretty good parents, they were taking care of their kids. Sure. They were just like, really, really, for the, all that, for being secular people, they were doing pretty good, it looked like for now. Okay, neat, but I'm just sitting there watching them and listening to them talk. You know, and yeah, I'm an eavesdropper, and yeah, I'm as nosy as a day is long, and that's the way it is. We left there, and then, of course, we had, next day, we went down to the archery range, and just me and, and Caleb and Abby, and so we went down there, and there, and there was a guy there with his son. He bought a little toy bow and some arrows, and he wanted his son to learn how to shoot, and so he went and paid for a lane at the archery range, and there's but he didn't pay for any instruction and his kid was sitting there and, and I, so I paid to spend time with my kids, but I sit there and I couldn't help it. I had to help this kid yeah. Yeah. and teach him how to shoot, how to do different things. And so we made it a fun time for him that was going to fall apart. Yeah. Okay. Watching all the other people, they didn't care. Mm -hmm. Nobody cared. Mm -hmm. 
if this kid did it or not. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter. So I just, so I did it, not a big problem. And just, you know, we all shot. And Caleb later says, I really appreciate that you helped him. Oh, that was I just really appreciate that. What a you, Caleb. he has. That's really good. Yeah. So then we went to Boondocks. Yeah. Okay. If you've ever been to Boondocks or any of these I've places, it's just, there. it's kids everywhere, everywhere. youth everywhere, yes. families, different people everywhere, every kind of person you can imagine showed up at Boondocks oh, yesterday. Yeah. It was just a steady caseload in people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why do I go? So I can ride the rides? No. No. Eh, big deal. I did the go-karts and they're all the same speed. So you can't pass anybody. You can't do anything. Just, ah, that's not, I can't back there. Totally. It's not to sneeze at. So anyway, <laughs> but we did, did bowling and we just did laser tag, which was interesting. And it's just all this fun stuff. That's not half as fun as watching all the people. Yeah, I like that too. There. It's my favorite stuff too. To do. And But it breaks my heart. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. To realize how much death is around me, how much death is in these people's lives. You yeah. know, to see these young, young couples, mm -hmm. you know, and these girls not wearing anywhere close close to enough clothing, you know, it's just mm -hmm. amazing. What are you doing? You know, why are you doing this? What is going on? And they're trying to find acceptance with each other, and they're willing to go through all sorts of death and destruction just to have a relationship mm -hmm. because. They don't feel like they right. have any value. Right. And I, this whole thing is just is. destructive so and just like uh, really amazing. Mm -hmm. I was exhausted by the time I got home. There's so much death around us to see it all. And then Roxy keeps smacking me. I got to let you know, she's not listening. So I can say this. She does not smack you. She does too. No, I am not kidding you. She'll rejoin you. God. You know why? Because I'm praying in tongues. And I don't even know I'm doing it. I'm just praying tons. So it's a little louder than what she wants it to be. Just stop it. What did I get into the middle of the Seventh Day Adventist Church on that? Yeah, I know. It's just like it's a problem with me because I just I'm just, I'm just trying to bring things in here. So if I could just put my phone up to my ear and talk in tongues, people yeah, then we'll, yeah, in another language. Right. Just, right. I forgot the phone part. Okay. Um, since curse in your piece. Yeah, that's yeah, all I need was to have something here. Where did you go? Where are you from? Bugs Nuck Sneak Vlogging. <laughs> okay. It's a neat country. <laughs> okay. Since cursing is the default setting, we need to actively pursue blessing. We've known this. Okay, the same as with life and death. Yeah. See, it's easy to understand with blessing and cursing. Is it as easy to understand between life and death? You got to actually. Pursue to see what you're looking at. Are you looking at life or death? You have to pursue to see it. Blessing is easier to understand than life. Life is tricky. There's more to it than what we're doing. But the blessing is a doing. Life is a state of existence. Okay. Uh, I am a blesser. That is my being. But blessing is a doing thing. Life is a being thing. So but you can do life okay i know it's getting a little twisted there but uh when you start looking at life as being what you are mm -hmm. that makes blessing so much easier mm -hmm. john chapter one three through five <clears throat> okay all things came into being through him and it's talking about jesus who is the logos all things came into being through him. And without him, not even one thing came into being that has come into being. Hmm. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. The darkness did not overtake it. Hmm. Okay. This passage links light and life. Life and light. They are now equal. They are now interchangeable. I let that sink for a little bit. Yeah. In him was life. Well, in him was light. Mm -hmm. And his light was the life of men. You can turn those around. And it still makes sense and you can verify it. Okay. Kind of the light shines in the darkness. Life comes from Jesus. He's the creator. He is the creator of all life. So it says all things came into being through him because he is life. And his life is the light of men. What was the first thing he created? light 
Mm-hmm. And he's speaking life into existence. And the first thing he creates is light. We Guys, we can start talking about all the fun things that science does now with life and light. And <laughs> oh, Nate here brought me more stuff today that was very, very interesting. And like, oh, it's just You're fun. Welcome. You're welcome. Amen. So it's just like really fascinating. But again, when we're talking about life, nobody can truly give me a definition of life. Mm. It's a person. It is a person. That's just it. So science is trying to describe yeah. life and they're having a hard time because it's a person. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's to me, it's just like really fascinating uh, when they start. All they can do is show what the qualities of physical life are. But they don't know what it really is. Mm-hmm. They know that physical, it will separate cells. It will right. up, it will right. deal with nutrition. Right. It will do different things. And that's right. life. Then you say that and you say, but that baby in that womb is life. Absolutely. And they go, no, no, that's just it. I know. Just, this makes no sense to me. It makes no sense. Okay. How about John 5, 24 through 26? Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who hears my word and believes the one who has sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. Hmm. Truly, I say to you that an hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and the ones hearing will live. For even as the Father has life in himself, so he also gave to the Son to have life in himself. Hmm. Now, we're, we're starting to talk about the actual life force in a person, the actual substance of what life is, okay? I have passed out of death into life. Mm -hmm. By the way, that into is the same into that says Mm -hmm. believe into Jesus. There it is. There's the into. I've passed from death into into life. And why do I keep choosing the death? And why do I still keep living in the death? And why am I living in the death as if life wasn't always around me? See, Mm -hmm. we have more in us happening to us than we are acknowledging or understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because Mm -hmm. we're living in a society that loves death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We have covenant with death. We have covenant with life. No wonder we can't really make sense with each other. Right. We'll understand yeah. each other. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But as the father has life in himself, he also gave, he gave also to the son to have life in himself. This is Jesus talking, by the way. Mm-hmm. And that way he says, whoever hears my word and believes the one who has sent me. Anybody want to venture a guess? Is that Lagos or Rama? Anybody? How brave, I would say, I would brave say, souls. I would say Logos. Would you? Well, it could be both. I'm just watching the processing happening around the room. Mm-hmm. That's, that's well, you told me to be brave, so here yes, I am. Yes, you did. And you are, you're absolutely totally correct. <laughs> it is Logos. When he hears my word. Yeah. He's talking about the whole thing. I think so, too. Like whoever the hears whole, my word yeah. and believes the one who sent me. Okay, yeah. so he's bringing out the whole word. Yeah. The part of it you believe will bring you into it. Okay, so he's talking about the whole word. Right. Even though later he's going to be talking about the rhema. Okay, so this was the whole word. Just thought I'd test you. Just make life fun for you. Okay. By believing, our entire course of existence changed. Mm-hmm. Anybody have a testimony about that? I'm sure. Mm-hmm. No. Okay. By anything. faith, we changed the whole fiber of our being. Mm-hmm. everything we are no longer death beings we are life beings <laughs> am i a human being <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a life being i have a, i'm not no i am no longer human i am no longer strictly human which is which everybody says we're not sure you ever were it's all good <laughs> anything? Yeah, I just you, but i am uh, now that I am no longer human, yeah, I might have skirted that issue for a little while, but hey, listen, I am no longer human. I'm not a death being. I'm a life being. Do we act like that is true in our lives? Do we act like it? Okay. If you are a life being, then you have the life to bless others with. If you're a life being, you can share it. You can promote it. You can propagate it. You can use it you can apply it you can do something with it 
you can manipulate, if you like the term, life. You can actually do something with it. That's what healing is all about. Mm -hmm. Question. Yes, ma'am. So how do you know whether you are, when you are a blessing to others and you have the life, how do you know, how do you differentiate between soul life, which soul life will bless people, mm -hmm. um, but then you have the life of God, which surpasses okay. that and is supposed to basically push out the soul life? No, I wouldn't say that. Your spirit life in you enhances that soul life to be who God has called your soul to be. God's not getting rid of your soul. Okay. He's so sanctifying your soul. He's it into he is. the life of God. That's so right. how do you tell the difference? By the action, I guess, by the <laughs> outcome. By listening to what God is saying. Uh, what's it, what's the proof of it? What's it doing in the other person's life? What is the outcome? What is What's happening with it? You can watch the whole process, see if it's okay. life or not. Mm -hmm. And but some people will call it death if you start bringing them life and they don't, they're not fight you tooth and nail. There are people who are like that who will fight life. Anybody ever met one of those? <laughs> but it comes with it as a witness of the Holy Spirit because I know when I'm, I'm lifing and when I'm deathing. Well, I'm just saying that someone who's not born again has soul life to bless people if they so they sure. can sure they can do good things there is good out there that's yeah. not just and so people will look at the actions of someone who is blessing through their soul as because these are questions i'm asking Certainly. myself how do i move from natural soul life mm -hmm. and soul life that is completely possessed by God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that doesn't necessarily look like life. It doesn't. But that's where the witness of the Holy Spirit comes in because you're doing it because of a relationship with Jesus. And when Jesus is telling you to do stuff, that's what makes the difference. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah, it's when it so looks like we it. should be doing yeah. something for somebody and we don't, you go, right. what's wrong with you? Exactly. Jesus didn't tell me to do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He says, well, speaking the truth in love. <laughs> is is speaking lie? Yes. Speaking truth, and it's love. But again, yes. it's how people. Yeah. Can but see, see, part of that is the answer to that because that word in in Ephesians where it says speaking the truth in love doesn't say that in the Greek. What does it say? It doesn't say speaking. It takes the word truth and makes it into a verb, which it would be better to be truthing. translated as. Truth, truthing, but truthing, truthing in love. Yeah, truthing is more than just speaking truth. It's acting truth. It's knowing yeah, truth. It's true. bringing truth. It's right. truthing. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a weird word, but that's but that brings the same thing. Is that when I'm doing that, that's when the Holy Spirit, because Jesus is the way, the truth mm -hmm. and the life, 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 and so the blessing that comes from it is going to cause that, and I'm going to know that it might not always have effect in the people I'm blessing. Mm -hmm. They're maybe so curse oriented, whatever. They're not going to mm -hmm. see it, not going to get it. Doesn't mean I'm not obeying it. Doesn't mean that God can't work through it. That's right. That's right. So it's all about as obedience really is really the factors. Is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. We should be able to break any death that's in our lives. We should. We don't very often do that, but we should. Okay. It requires a complete change in how we think. Man, we've got to change my brain. You know, it's just like focused around the death, focused around the sickness, focused around the stuff. Mm -hmm. It's bad. Uh, verses 5, 27 through 29 goes on. It says, and he also gave authority to him to execute judgment, for he is the son of man. Do not marvel this, for an hour is coming in which all those in the tombs will hear his voice, and they will come out. The ones having done good into a resurrection of life. And the ones having practiced evil into a resurrection of judgment. Now, this is talking about the last resurrection mm -hmm. after death. Mm -hmm. See? So, everybody in the tomb is going to hear his voice. Mm -hmm. Everybody. He says that. Every evil about. Yeah. And it's, but, yeah, but it's the ones that have done, gone over to him in life will raise to the resurrection of life. Absolutely. Those who have not come to him in life right. will be raised to a resurrection of death. Right. Because yeah. there's no life. Mm -hmm. right. I don't think there's heavy. a chance at the very end that God will say yeah. to them, you can still. Yeah. No. The, no. No. Nope. Once, no. once that. Once you're yeah. dead, you're dead. Okay. 
Okay. Now, what is kind of fascinating in this, it says, it says uh, when they come out, the ones having done good into a resurrection of life, the ones mm -hmm. having practiced evil. Oh, there you go. Full circle back to Deuteronomy. Okay. I set before you life and death and good and evil. There, it, it's bringing a, that couplet mm -hmm. back to it. Okay. It's all by choice and choices. Now, I chose life one time. That was cool. That's called getting born again. And then there's thousands of choices, sometimes per day. <laughs> thousands of choices. Okay, it's not just the choice, but choice says, okay, to choose life. John 6, 63 says, and it's the spirit that gives life. Flesh does not profit nothing. The words which I speak to you are spirit. The words which I speak, anybody want to venture a guess here? Lagos or Rama? Rama. It's Rama. Very good. Let's go. All right. The words that I speak to you. Yeah. I speak to you are spirit and they are life. And they are life. The spirit lives in us. Romans 8, 11, right? One of the, make your mortal body live. The Rama are spirit and life. It just, that just tickles. It tickles my brain. I don't know. These are like, it's like the rhema gives the faith to believe because we got that from Romans, right? Romans 10, 17, you know, by faith, you know. Uh, uh, come out, come out. You're in there. Um, um, it is through the word that you get faith, right? Yeah. So comes by you. Yeah. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the rhema. Oh God, I knew I get it. I've got it backwards. Version. Okay, the relationship with Jesus is absolutely everything. Okay, are we having fun yet? John 14, 6. I must quote this thing every week to somebody. Then Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now this is that whole wonderful exchange in John 14, which happened with the disciples about, you know, well, I'm leaving, but you can't come. What? Hey, what's going on? You know, it's because it doesn't go away, and it's all this, way, eh? and they're all freaking out. But it says, no one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. We don't give him the credit for mm -hmm. those three. Everyone who comes to the Father must come right. Mm -hmm. You must come in the right manner, okay? All who come must come through Jesus. There is no other way. None whatsoever. You can't come there without being life. No death. I've got to be the life to come to the, Jesus changes me, bring me to the Father. This is all uh, fascinating. We are changed to be able to get there, which just brings everything so fun about the court of heaven, about going to the court of heaven and about doing, you know, well, I can stand there before the court of heaven because I am life. Mm -hmm. He's changed me. This isn't about how good I am. Yeah. But it is about how much condemnation I'm throwing around. This is why we go to the court, the law of the Jews mm -hmm. and get the forgiveness of things going first. Mm -hmm. So there's no condemnation in our own minds, in our own hearts, because your heart, your condemnation comes from your own heart. Mm -hmm. Will this sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we were deaf. Thank you. We brought that death to Jesus, and he became our sin and death to unite with us. Because I think you want to be in there unless they're in agreement. In agreement. In agreement. He died our death, mm -hmm. but not for long. We were united with him as he conquered that death, and now we are life in him. See, we didn't stay in the death. We were dead in our transgressions and sins. Mm -hmm. Then we united with Jesus and he died and died the death, the death to die. Say that 14 times too long. Died the death so the death could die. He died the death so the death could die. I'm not going to do 14, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. He died the death so that our death could die so that we have life. Wow, in him. Uh, and now we are life in him. Our resurrection in him changed us absolutely and completely. He joined his life to me and made me life. 
Not, not that he made me live. Yeah, he did that too. But not just that, but the continual existence of my identity. Mm. He made me life. My life is my identity. Why do I still live in the death? Mm -hmm. Brain damage is the only thing that comes to mind. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Revelation of the truth that already exists. The practical application by my choice and choices. Mm -hmm. So therefore, choose life and live his life through us. Mm -hmm. And again, we just have the words of Moses ringing in our ears. Mm -hmm. Choose life. Therefore, choose life. Choose life. Choose life and live his life through us. Life good and blessing what a neat path a lot better path than the death evil and cursing mm -hmm. okay so we must change our focus mm -hmm. it's true we must see life to live it <laughs> yeah yeah you can't do what you can't see yeah but you don't you can't go look for something you don't know to go look for. Exactly. So that's what I'm trying to get us to do is understand how much life we have in us. Mm -hmm. Wow. We are more than we've ever known. Mm -hmm. Ever known. Wow. Who are you? You are the life. Man, it should change how we should live. We have much to learn and apply. Don't you think? Yeah. I think that's probably true. Kaboom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, that was life number two. Mm. Will there be life number three next week? Only you are going to have to find mm -hmm. out. You can tell. <laughs> We've got some stuff coming up here, but that's what's the fact that you didn't say no mean yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Knowing him as well as we do. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, y'all think you know me so so well. We well, yeah, like see, way. it's like we've had two messages on life, which we know that life could be its own series. Yes. Mm -hmm. Really and true. It really is. Yes. But this is this is what makes life fun for me, is that mm -hmm. we're just we're just touching these things, but we're still doing the resurrection. That's what our subject matter is. Mm -hmm. Okay. But to not understand what life is. How in the world can we understand the resurrection if we don't know what life is? Yeah, yeah. So we're kind of like, you know, which comes first, you know? Well, yes. <laughs> you know? And then, and then you talk about the light on top of it, too. Yeah, we uh, can't even get there. I know. I was thinking of, I just when you were talking about it. So I'm, there's so, this is so much fun. I know, huh? Because it's just like, wow. <laughs> well, but again, the practical application is, what is going on with you and your body right now? Yeah. What is going on with you and your mm -hmm. existence right now? What's going on with you and the people that live with you right now? Are you coming in contact with people you can bring the life to? But if we don't know we're life, how can Jesus even talk to us about bringing that life to them? Mm -hmm. We have to know that first. Okay. If all we think we're death, how am I going to bring death to other people? We do that all the time, too. But, uh, okay. So the cursing, yeah. But, you know, man, to bless somebody with life, yeah. to bring them into, you know, good. Mm -hmm. I set before you life and good, death and evil, blessing and cursing. Wow. Yeah. Interesting concepts, eh? Mm -hmm. Makes one think. Makes one's head swim just a little bit. Questions, comments? Thinking is good. I like thinking. Yeah, thinking, thinking is good. I, I like oh. to think. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I overthink things. <laughs> My wife keeps accusing me of that's of always doing I'm that. I get I get the same, I get the same uh, it's thing. handy. I like it. I'm sorry. No questions. Comment. Well, you just have to kind of you gotta process this a little right. bit. Well, we say that, but I could bring up uh, three weeks ago. I saw and had any comments from people on that one. Have you had processed it yet? Huh? Huh? Okay. So, okay. See, well, I can make this really mean. 
I'm not going to. Okay. So yeah, because we'll tell Roxanne on you. <laughs> Go for it. She'll, <laughs> she'll slap him again. I know exactly. She, she just she just shake her head. I know. <laughs> Roxanne, this is all your fault. You've tried that one. <laughs> I don't think she accepts that. That's not gonna accept. And she shouldn't. Well, that's what she gets for not being here and defending herself. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for the beauty of your holiness, mm -hmm. amazing power of your life. Thank you. Thank you. And Lord, as we are, we are really trying to discover and look at how the resurrection that we already have is applicable. Mm -hmm. And the life that we already have is applicable. Lord, how to use this, shine it out, beam it out, touch others with it. Lord, we just... We need to understand more about the practical application of how this works. But Lord, may we learn first to just see ourselves the right way to know that we are life. And that means we don't want to be involved in any death around us. And Lord, for that, we just give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' precious name. <laughs> Amen. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm.